Welcome to Bergen Stages Radio Theater. Today, our storyteller, Karl Marx, will tell us about The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. So, curl up by the fire and listen to our tale. Most terribly cold it was. It snowed and was nearly quite dark in the evening, the last evening of the year. In this cold and darkness, there went along the street a poor little girl, bareheaded and with naked feet. When she left home, she had slippers on, it is true, but what was the good of that? They were very large slippers, which her mother had hitherto worn, so large were they, and the poor little thing lost them as she scuffled her way across the street because of two carriages that rolled by dreadfully fast. One slipper was nowhere to be found, and the other had been laid hold of by an urchin, and off he ran with it. He thought it would do capitally for a cradle when he some day or other should have children himself. So the little maiden walked on with her tiny naked feet that were quite red and blue from cold. She carried a quantity of matches in an old apron, and she held a bundle of them in her hand. Nobody had bought any of her for the whole live-long day. No one had given her a single farthing. She crept along, trembling with cold and hunger, a very picture of sorrow, the poor little thing. The flakes of snow covered her long, fair hair, which fell in beautiful curls around her neck. But of that, of course, she never once now thought. From all the windows, the candles were gleaming, and it smelt so deliciously of roast goose. For you know it was New Year's Eve, yes, of that she thought. In a corner formed by two houses, of which one more advanced than the other, she seated herself down and cowered together. Her little feet she had drawn close up to her, but she grew colder and colder, and to go home she did not venture, for she had not sold any matches and could not bring a farthing of money. From her father she would certainly get blows, and at home it was cold too. For above her she had only the roof, through which the wind whistled, even though the largest cracks were stopped by straw and rags. Her little hands were almost numbed by the cold. Oh, a match might afford her a world of comfort if she only dared to take a single one out of the bundle, draw it out against the wall, and warm her fingers by it. She drew one out. How it blazed, how it burnt. It was warm, bright flame, like a candle as she held her hands over it. It was a wonderful light. It seemed really to do the little maiden as though she were sitting before a large iron stove with burnished brass and a brass ornament on top. The fire burned with such blessed influence, it warmed so delightfully. The little girl had already stretched out her feet to warm them too, but the small flame went out. The stove vanished. She had only the remains of the burnt-out match in her hand. She rubbed another against the wall. It burned brightly. And where the light fell on the wall, there the wall became transparent like a veil, so that she could see into the room. On the table was spread a snow-white tablecloth. Upon it was a splendid porcelain service, and the roast goose was steaming famously with its stuffing of apples and dried plum. And what was still more capital to behold was the goose hopped down from the dish, reeled about on the floor with a knife and fork in its breast till it came up to the poor girl, when the match went out and nothing but thick, cold, damp wall was left behind. She lighted another match. Now there she was, sitting under the most magnificent Christmas tree. It was still larger and more decorated than the one that she had seen through the glass door in the rich merchant's house. Thousands of lights were burning on the green branches, and gaily colored pictures, such as she had seen in the shop windows, looked down upon her. The little maiden stretched out her hands toward them when the match went out. The lights of the Christmas tree rose higher and higher, and she saw them now as stars in heaven. One fell down and formed a long trail of fire. Someone is just dead, said the little girl, for her old grandmother. The only person who had loved her, and who was now no more, had told her that when a star falls, a soul ascends to God. She drew another match against the wall. It was light again, 
and the luster there stood the old grandmother, so bright and radiant, and so mild, and with such an expression of love. Grandmother, cried the little one, oh, take me with you. You go away when the match burns out. You vanish like the warm stove, like the delicious rose goose, and like the magnificent Christmas tree. And she rubbed the whole bundle of matches quickly against the wall, for she wanted to be quite sure of keeping her grandmother near her. And the matches gave such a brilliant light that it was brighter than the noonday. Never formerly had the grandmother been so beautiful and so tall. She took the little maiden on her arm, and both flew in brightness and joy so high, so very high, and then above was neither cold, nor hunger, nor anxiety. They were with God. But in the corner, at the cold hour of dawn, sat the poor little girl, with rosy cheeks and with a smiling mouth leaning against the wall, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. Stiff and stark sat the child there with her matches, of which one bundle had been burned. She wanted to warm herself, people said. No one had the slightest suspicion of what beautiful things she had seen. No one even dreamed of the splendor in which with her grandmother she had entered on the joys of the new year. Thank you for tuning in to Bergen Stages Radio Theater today to hear The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. Our storyteller was Karl Marx. Dean Matson is our recording engineer and sound effects creator. Marianne Coe is our video engineer, and I am Jim Bumgardner, your host. Thank you to Bergen Community College, the BCC Office of Student Life, and the BCC Media Technologies Department. All of us at Bergen Stages Radio Theater wish you and yours a happy and healthy new year. Tune into another episode of Bergen Stages Radio Theater soon, and be sure to catch some of our earlier episodes available online. Until next time, don't touch that dial, and if you do, remember to disinfect it first.